What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. I'm Scott Baer alongside Tori McElhaney and Ashton Edmonds. That sounds like our regular cast of characters. And we're coming to you <laughs> after a 32-17 victory, Falcons victory, over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We are still here. It's very, it's, we're, we're pushing well into the late night, into the evening as we record this podcast. Um, and we are not going to break this game down a whole lot, nah. right? Because I don't know how many fans want to dissect a win that had no impact on the playoff picture when I think all the optimism and focus is on what could and likely is a pivotal offseason for the Atlanta Falcons. We're after dealing with, I just checked over the cap.com, $82 million in dead money built up. Mm. It started – in the 60s, right, right, before the season was over, uh, they're going to have a lot of cap space. Yep, they're going to have a really good draft pick. Mm -hmm. It, we haven't seen anything official from the league at this point. It's either eight or nine. Seems to look like eight. Yeah. Okay. They got a pretty good player at number eight last year. Guy by the name of Drake London. He had a big day today. 120 yards on six catches. Six catches. Wow. I know. Did That's I read it? that right? I thought it was like <laughs> 10 catches. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So we're going to talk about this youth movement. We're going to talk about Desmond Ritter and the four game evaluation. We're going to look at where the Falcons go from here in terms of needs. Give a little off season preview. Uh, That's what Tori McElhaney script says. So no overall takeaways to this game. Right. But right. from where they sit with the assets they have, Tori, it seems to me you're smarter than me. It seems to me, though, that they have a golden opportunity to get better fast. Yep. I, I look at what. So on Saturday night, we saw Jacksonville get a berth to the the playoffs. Yeah. And I look at what they were two years ago and now they're a team going to the playoffs. I mean, I think that just goes to show that when you do have money, you can spend it in free agency. And then when you get some really high draft picks and you have a couple good draft classes that have a bunch of impact players on it, that's what happens. I don't think sitting here right now as the 2022 season officially comes to an end that there is any reason to not be hopeful and optimistic about where the Falcons are going. We've said it before, I'll say it again. I do think that this Falcons team has a really important rookie, not just rookie class, but young players that you can use as your foundation to build upon. And I, I really like, I mean, literally you've seen what Drake London and Tyler Algier have done in the last month and a half of the season and, and getting into franchise the franchise record books. Like, there is something building here. We're still, I think, in the early stages of that. And, and it was something that two years ago when Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith came to Atlanta and the first day that they were here, I remember saying, I can't remember if it was on the radio or what, but it was like, this was never going to be an overnight haul. This is not going to be something that you get a new coaching staff in here, you get a new front office in here, and everything magically changes because the salary cap constraints were so significant. You knew that it was going to take a couple of years to even begin to see what Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith wants, want to build in Atlanta. And I think that's where we are now. I actually think that we are on the cusp of that now. We've seen these foundational pieces, the Drake Londons, the Tyler Algiers, the – Chris Lindstrom's, AJ Terrell's, Kyle Pitts, these pieces that you know you can keep around and build around. Now you have now you go into this offseason with money, which you haven't had. You can be players in free agency, and you're gonna have some pretty significant draft capital to work with. I'm talking from the top all the way down. They have a lot of picks going into this 2023 NFL draft. It's gonna be a really big offseason for this team, for this organization. One that, in my opinion, should shift the way that we think about this team. And we've, we've talked a lot about the off-season priority list, the off-season shopping list, what they need, uh, what is most pressing. Ashton, I think it's fair to say that because of what we've seen, let, let's put Desmond Ritter in a 
aside for one second. Yeah, we'll talk about him in a minute. But <laughs> what I believe is that what we've seen from first and second year players is that they have established themselves as long-term solution possibilities. Do you agree that that the shopping list still has some big uh, – big, uh, Holes. Well, not holes. The well, spots. Right. Priorities. Spots, but it seems to have gotten shorter based upon what we've seen from first and, and second year players. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. I think, um, like you mentioned in your article, from what Tyler Algier and Drake London and, and those young guys have did this season, I, I think that definitely has made the shopping list way shorter. Um, I'm sure the Falcons are going to look at the defensive, si- defensive side of the ball um, on the front line and also in the secondary um, when thinking about, you know, getting players in free agency or maybe drafting a player, um, I think the defensive side of the ball is really going to be like a, a big focus going into the draft. Um, just because, you know, l- like Tori said earlier in the season, that a lot of these guys are just on like one year contracts or um, minimum contracts and, and this team is pieced together. So some of these guys may not be on the team next season. And, and I think um, it's crucial and, and critical that the Falcons do look for, you know, a, maybe a pass rush t- talent or maybe somebody in the secondary that, um, you know, can add depth to that group. So um, I definitely think the shopping list is shorter, but I, I do know that um, it's going to be a, a crucial offseason for the Falcons. I think it's going to be fascinating coming Honestly, up. Honestly, this is the most excited I've been heading into an offseason. Right. Yeah, in I'm excited. Opinion. I'm excited for the Falcons. Yeah, just uh, I think – and it will be – it only works if you spend and draft right. Yes. And how they stru- – we're not going to nerd out on contract structure. I could. Tori and I will do that. We could do it. The three <laughs> of us will do that. But I, I think in general, if you do it right so much – and I, there's been – oh, this was the point that I was going to make. There <laughs> has been a lot of roster turnover over the last couple of years out of necessity. Right. They either had to get rid of a load of contracts. They couldn't afford to pay guys that they wanted to keep – like Foye Aluakin, mm-hmm. that there are some guys that they had to let walk out the front door, and that doesn't have to happen anymore. So I think we're, we're going to see more roster turnover, a significant amount c- this coming off season. There's right. only 39 dudes under contract right now. <laughs> Wild. Wow. Right. So, Which is not unlike what it was the year before last. Right. But as we move forward, if, the, if they're doing it right, the roster turnover should get slower and slower and slower because they don't need as many things. And I think it's important because we're talking about having this money, right? And part of it is you need to, among the players, they need to be confident that if they, if they perform and are productive and honorable members of the team, they will get rewarded. You, you have a chance to make a statement this offseason with A.J. Terrell and Chris Lindstrom and I don't know, maybe if the price is right, Caleb McGarry, too. Right. You mm-hmm. have an opportunity to show your draft picks. You do well, we pay you. Mm-hmm. And I think that is an important thing. And what is left out of that is another important thing. Can they go find the right marquee, A-list, impact, premium position player mm-hmm. and get him in here and have and put him into the culture that Arthur Smith has established and have that work out. Because I, I think everything that Arthur said, and I know nobody cares about the small stuff. My branch is almost over. <laughs> nobody cares about the small stuff of working hard day to day, the practice grind, the commitment. They want to see wins, right? They, I think the foundation for how the Falcons work, how they operate, what they stand for has been established. Yeah. I think they do not have enough talent to compete with – Upper level teams, right? Seven and ten, two years in a row, a blown opportunity to win a division that was claimed by an under five hundred squad. Mm-hmm. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> miss, miss, miss opportunity. But can you make the most of the next one? Um, we we can get into some more off season stuff here. Let's switch to 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 Desmond. Tori, you wrote about kind of the state of the. Falcons quarterback situation heading into 2023. What did Arthur Smith, what did Desmond say about that? And what did you kind of learn about him over the course of four starts? Yeah, so I think first off, the first thing that I want to say about this is that I I want everyone to understand, and, and let's be clear about this, the 2022 season was always going to be a bridge from the Matt Ryan era to whatever comes next. And we are sitting in the middle, standing in the middle of this bridge, looking out across whatever body of water we are. I'm really painting a picture here. I love it. The waves are crashing. And so (laughs) you're looking over there, but you can't see what's on the other side yet. 
And 2022, I think when I went into it, I was like, it's okay if we don't know what the direction is, but we should be able to see the Falcons heading in a specific direction after the season's over. So right now you look at where Desmond Ritter is. We got to see him in a four game. Let's call it a tryout. It it was really and truly the coaching staff giving themselves the opportunity to see what they have in Desmond Ritter, the guy that they drafted with the number 74th overall pick. You've seen him go out and perform for four games. You've seen him improve, I think, and make st- and take steps in the right directions through four games. I am really curious. I would love to be in the mind of Arthur Smith, Dave Ragone, et cetera, et cetera, Charles London, these decision makers for this offense about truly what they feel like they do have in Desmond Ritter. Do you feel like you saw enough in four games to give him the start in 2023? If, I, if it's me, I am shopping around this offseason. Definitely. I, either way, regard, and I said this before, regardless of what Desmond Ritter did in those four games that we saw, quarterback was always going to have to be on the priority list. It just – how much can Des, did Desmond Ritter move the needle for how important it is that you find a starter caliber quarterback? I honestly still think you need to go out and find that. And whether that's in the draft or whether that's in free agency or a trade or whatever, I I just, I still think that you owe it to yourself to see what options are out there to fall in love with somebody who you think could be your future franchise quarterback, because you can't stay on this bridge forever. At some point, you're going to have to make a decision and go towards it. Yeah. I I think Desmond has deserved, has earned the right to compete for this job Mm -hmm. and compete and be, a respected competitor, not somebody who would need something Herculean to make it happen. I I kind of – I don't know if I disagree with you, but I, I wouldn't – if you're not going to draft a quarterback in the first round – Oh, I wouldn't. I mean, don't. Yeah. Right? Because right. you already have a third-round talent yeah. and a guy who knows your system and is likable and a good leader and all those types of things. Don't go to day two and three That's why I said fall in love. Right. Exactly. Because when you love, fall in love, fall in yeah. love is a first round pick. Right. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So it's, and I don't think that it benefits the Falcons to just give Desmond the keys and bring in a Colt McCoy type, right. a, a career backup at this point. Yeah. I don't Push. know if that helps right. either. Right. There are so many quarterbacks, seemingly, the franchise tags haven't been. Uh, applied yet but there are so many quarterbacks in hitting free agency mm-hmm. uh Derek Carr Ryan Tannehill Daniel Jones Lamar Jackson sort of but probably sort not of, really but maybe not really <laughs> but there's there are a lot of options there and Tori mentioned a trade we are seeing signal callers move at a crazy rate yeah and I think this could be the busiest quarterback offseason that we've found and we have the last five six years have been very busy w- in the quarterback market Right. I mean, just the blockbuster trades that we've seen over the last five years have been kind of mind boggling because I feel like we didn't see stuff like that prior, like 10 years ago. Right. Now, for going back to like what the Falcons do and what Desmond Ritter does, I, I, I think too, a part of this is that I do think that I get the sense that Arthur Smith does like Desmond Ritter. Yeah, I think me he, too. I think he likes him. For him to say constantly that he likes what he's made of, and he really, he likes what he sees from Desmond Ritter in pressure situations. He, using the example of what we saw uh, against Tampa Bay today, they went for it on. They were kind of around midfield in the fourth quarter, and they go for it on fourth and medium. And Arthur Smith said after the game that. It was because of Desmond Ritter in those pressure situations that it almost kind of changed his thinking about going for it on fourth down. I kind of think that that's a good thing for – I mean, if I'm Desmond Ritter and my coach says that about me and feels like I can come up in the clutch, that's pretty good. And I I just – I think about what maybe – again, it all just goes back to what I think Arthur Smith is thinking. Mm -hmm. He's the play caller. He's the head honcho. Like – in his head, does he want to stick with Desmond Ritter? Yeah. I that's mean, he's that's the have, question. He, he's seen a lot of football. He's been a coach in the NFL for a while. He's seen a lot of different players come through the league. And um, Desmond only played four games. But I do think you saw his confidence through those four games. Um, he played a lot of tough teams, the Saints, 
the Ravens, Cardinals, and, and, and now the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I think he did really well. I think he progressed in each of those four games. And that's that was like one of the main things that he talked about focusing on is just progressing each game. And, um, you know, like Tory said, Arthur Smith, it, it seems like he has a lot of confidence in Desmond Ritter. And, and it seems like he, he really likes what he sees out of Ritter. So, um, you know. Yeah, I mean, we shall see. Yeah, <laughs> and it's going to. It's, it's going to be fascinating because there is no doubt that Arthur and Terry will be pictured at Ohio State's Pro Day. Yep. And we Ala- talked about this. And Alabama's They're going to be Day. there. They're going to be there. Yep. And, and the, why not? Yeah. Do your due diligence and see what is available to you in terms of the top tier. In the same breath of when we got to the bye week and we're talking about the Falcons deserve to see what they have in Desmond Ritter, yeah. they deserve to see what's out there. 100%. And what is an option for you moving forward? Yeah. And what are things going to cost? If they go and they sign a quarterback in the open market for $25 bucks a year, you're you're locked in that one. Yeah. Um, and You've so, made your decision. Right. And – that the actions of what comes next will will speak louder than anything that can be said from a podium and should not be looked at as a referendum on Desmond Ritter and his ability to compete at an NFL level. Mm-hmm. He, he talked about increasing confidence after this four-game stint. I think he showed he can play at this level. Yeah. He went four games without a pick. That's I mean, pretty that's, good. That's pretty impressive. That I is. know, like, I know you can kind of talk all day long, but this is a guy who – I mean, sure, we go back and we look at that Saints game, and there probably should have been three picks in that game. Yeah. But there wasn't. They didn't catch them. He went four games without throwing an interception. Yeah, and I, I think his body of work was one of quality. Mm-hmm. And that's a compliment that I think is fair and should be afforded to a guy who I like it because he's got moxie. He's a gamer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I we, like gamers. Yeah. And he is definitely one. I mean, we saw it on – I mean, the best play that I think he's made, he, he made – today was his best performance. Definitely. In my opinion, without question, we saw Desmond Ritter's best today. I know the first half was not great. No. He was four for nine for like 25 passing yards, whatever. But then he comes out in the second half, and this is what I think Desmond Ritter does – so so well I cannot compliment him enough on the way that he doesn't let one bad thing progress into more bad things and spiral out of control he get he can get a hold of himself like if something bad happens he's right back in it and I think that's what you saw in the second half and the guy goes out and throws for over 200 passing yards and and the one of the best plays that I thought he made was on his very first touchdown pass to Michael Pruitt he, the pocket is collapsing in around him. He scrambles out. He extends the play enough so that he makes the defender come to him and it leaves Michael Pruitt wide open – or not wide open, but open enough to get in the ball in the end zone. Yeah. I, I'm not saying that's the best play that he's made in like these four games, but to me it's up there and it shows that gamer mentality and it shows you something that maybe you want to see more of when there are more weapons out there, when you maybe go out and get a couple more wide receivers and Kyle Pitts gets back out there, you know, like that's another part of this. Do you want to see Desmond Ritter with a different collection of playmakers around him? Yeah. That's that's another question too. It it is. And Arthur Smith, he's not going to go over his offseason priority list, but he, he made it clear even in this press conference. And it's not the first time he's mentioned this, but he said, we need to get more explosive on offense Mm -hmm. and we need to improve our pass rush and pass defense as a whole. I think those are two major areas that need to get addressed both through the draft and free agency. Yep. They've got to get more explosive on offense. And I think you're right. Desmond Ritter gets better if Kyle Pitts is out there. Mm-hmm. He gets better with another, I think, Juju Smith-Schuster. <laughs> <laughs> you throwing that out there? Yeah, I just, I don't know. <laughs> Speaking it into existence, I, I think he'd be a great personality for this group as well. Uh, but but there's a lot of intriguing talent. Go out there, take care of those two things. Yeah, I uh, mean, I just go get someone, someone, anyone beside Grady Jarrett. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to get to, someone in the defensive interior. Yeah, place. And, and, and it's not just edge rushers, although they need some, of those, so I, I think it's going to be important to see how that works forward. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have it. What's what's on top of your priority list? 
Right. Exactly. It's different for everybody. You know, like what's on top of my priority list is a, de- a, a interior defensive lineman. Okay. I, Interesting. I, t- I tend to lean defense heavy anyways. I said last year I wanted them to draft an edge rusher. So mm-hmm. either both, I, I tend to lean that way anyways, especially considering what defense has been in Atlanta for the last few years. Um, so for me, that that's where I think you put, you need to put money back into that group. I know you're paying Grady Jarrett a lot, but gosh, we saw against Tampa Bay, the man had two or three people around him at all points in time. Yeah. Almost every snap outside of that one tackle for a loss where they just forgot mm-hmm. where is Grady Jarrett. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say my on, mine's is honestly a cornerback in the secondary. Okay. We definitely need somebody opposite. Uh, we know Casey Hayward's contract is uh, through the 2023 season. Correct. correct. Yeah, yeah, he um, has one more year after this year. Okay. Um, so I would say I, I think the Falcons should look at, you know, maybe – Maybe drafting a, a young cornerback, or maybe bringing in a young cornerback through free agency. Um, I feel like that was an area where they struggled. You know, a, a lot of teams they passed over like 200 plus yards over the course of the season, which has hurt the Falcons' defense a lot. Um, and and I definitely think they need a more solid cornerback opposite of uh, AJ Terrell. I mean, and you would hope that you get Casey Hayward back, and he is yep. the guy that you all – like, I think everybody thought that that duo would be, the AJ Terrell-Casey Hayward duo, duo. I said so many times on this darn podcast that I was the most excited to see AJ Terrell and Casey Hayward work together. I still feel that way. Yep. I still want to feel see how they work together. But I also agree with Ashton that you have to build up that position group because when we look w- – when Casey Hayward went down and we look at nothing against the guys that went in for him, but there was a very obvious dip. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And Casey Hayward is entering his mid-30s right. at, at, at this point. So that's not going to go on forever. So I, 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 I do agree that both of those – position groups and areas I always think edge rusher mm-hmm. and and I, and that's one of those that you draft and then you go get one go get one that, that you just can't have enough I think Dean P said we need guys who can win one-on-one battles mm-hmm. he said that in December of 2021 <laughs> he could easily say that in December of 2022 yeah that, no offense to Arnold Ebicady I think who will be a good player mm-hmm. and D'Angelo Malone who needs to keep developing he's gonna have first real off season gonna mm-hmm. pack on some muscle probably but I just think that you need more there yeah I think do you think this isn't in the script do you think fans would be how do you think they would react to another skill player like in the first round because they've gone Pitts and London I know that's the thing right? I, my thing is is <laughs> Especially with the state of this defense. Right. My thing is, is with the state of this defense, I can't overlook the state of this defense. And also, this may be a hot take. I'm going to say it anyways, though. Because you don't have a solid answer at quarterback, it makes it really hard for me to say you go out and you get Kyle Pitts, Drake London, and then another receiver let's say another wide receiver, three years in a row when you have this fluctuating idea of what you want to do at quarterback. Because those guys, I mean, Kyle Pitts will be entering into his third year in the league, which is bonkers to say, but you don't want to waste that. Right. And I don't know if waste is the right word. That's probably a little too harsh. But I just can't overlook that. The fact that you, you've, you've gone out and you've got some really good receivers here. Put something towards this defensive line. Right. And, and I mean edge rushers and I mean interior guys. Yeah. I, I personally just can't get past that right at this juncture where we are right now. The entire defensive front seven needs help. A lift. Yeah. I think. All right. Uh, another quick question for you. Which of the prove it deal guys do you resign? Um, I, I know you're going to say Rashawn Evans. I'm not going to say You're Rashawn. not going to say, I was going to say, I was going to say, if you weren't going to say Rashawn, I was going to say Michael Pruitt. Okay. That's a good one. I, he's I, really Rashawn emerged. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Guys. Rashawn, you think about it, Rashawn, Michael Pruitt, um, Bradley Pinion. Bradley Pinion. I think um, Alameda Zacchaeus, is he on the Prove It? Uh, he, he he signed a, a restricted free yeah. agent tender, so oh. he he will hit the market. Yeah, you know, so like that's another guy who's been mm-hmm. productive. You could kind of yeah. bring all those guys back. I I think they, I 
probably bring Isaiah Oliver back. Why not? You know, oh, yeah. why not? But you still need to keep stacking that cornerback. Right. right. Yeah. You, you just have to. That's another position where you can't have enough good ones. Right. So I, I think some guys have proven it. Yeah. I think Rashawn Evans is coming back. I'll say it. I think I think he should. He I, had great like, command yeah, of his defense. And he knows it and you know, I think I, I think he I think he works. Right. Yes. Dean Pease spoke a lot of great things about mm-hmm. him just over the course of the season. Yeah. yeah. And then for Michael Pruitt, I think that That's a he, good one, outside the box one. Yeah, yeah, I think I've been very pleased with what he did in Kyle Pitt's absence and I think getting Kyle Pitts back. Like I, I think I actually think Michael Pruitt's a really good like number two, number three tight end option for you. And yeah. I, I th- he's a good pass catcher. We've seen. I mean, gosh, he's been in the end zone how many times this year? Yeah. I, I think he's a really good um, downfield blocker. I mm-hmm. think in terms of just like your, I think he works in Arthur Smith's system. He's proven in that. So I like Michael Pruitt. I like Rashawn Evans. Um, I'll be interested to see what they do with Elijah Wilkinson. Yeah. I think the fact that they were playing around with the idea of moving Matt Hennessy to left guard, that'll be something to watch this off season. I'm, I'm curious to see across the offensive line how that group shapes out. Um, but in terms of prove it guys, those are kind of the ones on my radar. Yeah, and I, I think overall, like we could kind of go through all these things and um, go well over time. But I, I, th- I think what – the takeaway is, is that 2022 had some good and positive developments within it. It obviously wasn't good enough or the Falcons would still be in contention or still be playing. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's not the case. But I think that there were some good developments. And I think that we're going to enter into a fascinating period that we're going to write a ton about quarterbacks and edge rushers and cornerbacks everything is just premium position yeah. one after another i agree with arthur smith get more explosive on offense mm-hmm. and generate a pass rush that has not been good enough that has to change as we head into the 2023 offseason yeah and let's be honest too i'll say this as well the pressure is on for this front office and coaching staff to create pass rush options in Atlanta because I think the old regime missed the mark on that. I think that there are a lot of people who would say that they did. I mean, that Tack McKinley just didn't work out. Right. So I think the pressure is on. It's been years since pass rush has been a topic of conversation for the Falcons. I want to see that change this year. Yeah, so it's going to be fascinating to see how this develops as we, as I've said in this pod, and I always say actions speak louder than words, and it's action time for uh, how they build this roster up. And that's going to do it for us here. Week 18, Falcons final whistle. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us for season number two of this podcast. It started literally from nothing and <laughs> has a really solid following. And we, yeah. re- you know, and we really appreciate the people that go on. They, they comment on YouTube. They, they, you know, put questions in the mailbag mm-hmm. and that we've seen this thing grow. And that's only because of you guys. It's all word of mouth and it's all about having the loyalty of a great fan base and you guys care. And yep. that's the most important thing. We don't want you to agree with us all the time. No, we I just want I, you to be passionate about how you feel yeah, about this team. I would absolutely love I mean, I love having a difference of opinions because a lot of times it helps me think differently right. about what other people prioritize and why they prioritize it. I think it's so good to have a different opinion that there be difference of opinions collectively across the board just be nice about it yeah that's all i ask i i I don't ask for anything else just be kind about it well hey please rate review subscribe to the falcons audio podcast network if that's how i'm supposed to say it yeah that's it podcast network and uh boy i'm not gonna give away i'm not i'm not gonna give anything away but have we got some exciting podcast related developments coming for you stay tuned for that very soon maybe even this week (laughs) and uh we will talk to you again real real soon see ya